My name is Ed Burns. Today I'm going to be talking about Java Server Faces 2.2, which is a part of Java EE7. JSF is a framework for building web-delivered UIs from off-the-shelf components. JSF 2.2 builds on the features introduced in the previous versions of the specification in Java EE6 and includes many new features including HTML5 friendly markup, resource library contracts, and faces flows. Let's review the role of JSF. JSF isn't so much an specific instantiation of a technology rather than an abstraction that defines how you would build a web delivered user interface from components. As an abstraction, it has endured over time. This is because it defers a lot of the rendering specific decisions to the individual user interface components that you're building from. So you can define your pages once and uh, with small amounts of change use different component libraries over time and uh, in this way preserve the value of your investment um, as the user interface technologies change and mature. Let's restate the scope of JSF. When you build a web application, you really are building a distributed application. And in any, any distributed application, you have to find the right allocation of processing tasks to processing nodes. The processing tasks in distributed application usually include user interface, the persistence, the model integration, the business logic, um, the transaction, the authentication, and user management. All of these things can be allocated to different nodes when building a distributed system. And the user interface is no exception. With JSF, the user interface logic will substantially reside on the server. Um, and this allows you to um, have each of the components in the user interface own their own little patch of the screen, and they are responsible for rendering themselves and also for interpreting the information that comes back from the browser in the response. This is an example of inversion of control when applied to the user interface itself, because you define what are the components in the page, and then each of the components knows what to do in the component lifecycle, uh, both for the rendering and also for the processing of responses from the browser. There are many new features in JSF 2.2. We're only going to talk about three of them here today. HTML5 friendly markup, resource library contracts, and faces flows. Let's jump straight into HTML5 friendly markup. HTML5 friendly markup intends to let the elegance of the native HTML shine through. This is a departure from the previous versions of the specification where the purpose of JSF tags was to hide the complexity of HTML so that if you wanted to take advantage of a very nice and full-featured component in your page without having to worry about how that renders itself and how uh, the rounded corners are done and how the mouse over icons will uh, cause the button to change when you hover and tooltips and all of that kind of interactivity, that all could be hidden inside the use of a JSF component. So if you had this capability in JSF, you would simply use a new component. If you needed to take advantage of a feature that just wasn't present in the browser, there was no color picker uh, or there was no calendar component in HTML, then you would write a JSF component. With JSF 2.2, we turn this feature on its head where if you wanted to take advantage of a new component that the browser had, but you did not want to write a new JSF component that would use that, then you could use this HTML5 friendly markup feature. This lets you leverage the strength of the JSF lifecycle, which is on the request processing on the server side, but leverage the expressiveness of HTML5 by having the um, authoring experience be essentially the same as if it was a static HTML page. Static in the sense that the markup is delivered once, but all of the behavior and interactivity happens uh, in the client side because the browser has been given a lot of JavaScript and CSS and images along with that static markup. 
take a demo to make this a little more clear. Here we have a simple HTML page. It has a form and an input text field and a button and some static text. And when we view this in the browser, uh, it renders like this. And if we view source, we can see it's just the same thing as was sent down uh, that we saw in the IDE. Uh, if we press submit, of course, nothing happens because there's no form action here. Nothing there. Now, if we wanted to take that page and turn it into a JSF page, uh, we could simply throw in a few of these attributes here. Um, so we still have the form tag, we still have the two input fields, we still have the static text, but we've added a few of these attributes here. Um, it turns out that in JSF 2.2, if you declare an XML namespace, as shown here, xmlns.jcp.org slash JSF, any attribute from that namespace, the presence of any attribute from that namespace on any tag will cause JSF to attempt to map that to one of the HTML basic components. And if it can't find a mapping, then it will just use the native markup and uh, allow the server-side processing to happen as if it was uh, a regular JSF component. So when you do this, you can turn a plain HTML form into a proper JSF form. And so what that looks like is the same but uh, when we view it with view source, we'll see that it has all of the extra JSF stuff in it. And um, we can also note that we can put in values here, Java 8E. And uh, you can see that we're actually processing this on the server side. So that EL expression that I showed you is actually evaluated uh, right here. Another feature this gives us is the ability to have more complex kind of components. So in this example, we have um, a form with a number of different components in it, and some of them are using the HTML5 types. So input type equals tell, input type equals email, and also we're using the progress component. Now JSF itself doesn't know about these new kind of component types, but they get rendered just the same. So if I click here and we're going to go and look at this component, uh, if we type in some values here, we can see the progress meter is uh, showing our progress. Um, and this is an HTML5 component running inside of JSF 2.2. And the way that works is, because these really are JSF components, we're able to Ajaxify them just like any other JSF component would be. So this really shows you the power of uh, JSF uh, with HTML5 working together the best capabilities of server-side integration, which is the ability to simply Ajaxify it, uh, along with the simplicity of the markup that we have and expressiveness of the markup that we have in HTML5. Let's take a look at the next feature, resource library contracts. This feature entirely builds on facelets, which was introduced in JSF 2.0. There are two main concepts in facelets templating, the template and the template client. The template client contains the content that you need to actually display to the user, whereas the template will define how that content from the template client is laid out in relation to itself and other elements in the page. When you look at what's in a template, really there are three pieces of information. The most important, of course, is the name of the template file itself. And once you know the name of the template file, you need to know the name of the insertion points. For example, on this one, you could say that there's a header and a content insertion point. And optionally, you might need to know something about the resources that are going to be in that template. For example, if there are CSS styles in there and you want to have the markup that's inside those little insertion points take advantage of those CSS styles in a specific way, uh, you might need to know those CSS class names so you can put them on your markup. But that's optional. Um, you, know, you can get quite a good of bid from facelets when you just use the uh, template file name and the insertion points. 
Once we've defined what is in a facelift, we can really understand that we've essentially defined a contract. And so let's call that a proper component. A contract, a resource library contract, is something that has declared templates, declared insertion points, and declared resources. Once we have created a contract, then we have to find out how to package it. Using the convention over configuration approach we had in JSF 2.0, you can put your resource library contracts either in the web app root in the contracts directory, or you could put them in jar files in WebInf Lib. Once you've done that, then you can essentially treat the set of available contracts um, as being able to be used by any of your facelift pages, regardless of where they reside, in the web app root or in the, in the jar in WebInf Lib. Again, you still need to know what are the names of the templates, what are the names of the insertion points, and optionally, what are the uh, CSS and JavaScript and other kinds of resources there. So any of the facelift pages in your app can use any of the available contracts by default. If you'd like to customize how the facelift pages can use those uh, set of available contracts, you can do that with logic in the facesconfig.xml. Or if you would like to make a direct reference, any of the facelift pages can directly refer to one of the contracts by declaring it in the F colon view element. The final feature I'd like to talk about today is faces flows. Um, one of the things that we noticed with JSF over time is that applications can get out of hand quickly when there's large numbers of pages. Um, and Prior to the introduction of basis flows, applications were one large flow where everything was visible. And there was no logical partitioning. There was no built-in limited object scoping. We didn't have anything by default that lets you put information in a place that spans several pages, but less than a full HTTP session. Another problem was that everything was a page. The only way to invoke application logic was to tie it to a UI component that the user activates. We took the definition of JCP and used it to look at what we had out there in prior art and looked at ADF task flows, Spring Webflow, and Apache MyFaces Cody as the sources of inspiration for this feature. So you can think of a flow as like a Java method. It can be called from any place in the application. Um, it has a single entry point, it has input parameters and return values, and a well-defined interface contract where the implementation details are hidden. We've, had, we've added two different uh, ways for um, flow-scoped objects to be stored. There's a new flow, faces flow scope implicit EL object, and there is also a new at flow scope CDI annotation. Uh, things you put in these scopes will be present while you're in that scope and will go away once you leave that scope. Um, if you're in the scope and you call another scope, they don't go away. They stay there, but they're hidden um, as you go into the new scope on the stack. And when you return back to that scope, the things in, that are present in the scope will be active again. So it really is a call stack, very, very similar to what you have in a proper programming language. Local variables that are in one method, uh, when you call another method, those local variables will not be accessible until you return from the method. I mentioned that prior to flows, navigation was just between views. Well, now with flows, navigation is between these different flow nodes. And there's different kinds of flow node types, view, method call, switch, flow call, and return. The next slide shows the UML diagram of all of these different kinds of flow nodes. And you can author your faces flows using either XML in a faces config file or similar, or you can use a Java builder API. In summary, JSF continues to be a stable platform for the UI for Java server applications. Been around a while, it's very mature. Uh, we've had a lot of years of experience to uh, increase the quality of the code and the performance of the code, and we continue to do those things. We, with HTML5 friendly markup, we're allowing the native markup 
shine through, but yet have the full inter integration of the JSF lifecycle. Resource library contracts enables you to do site templating uh, in a very uh, dynamic way where the um, template of the site can be swapped out dynamically simply by including different contracts that provide the same implementation of the contract, but yet have a different appearance. And faces flows allows you to have view modularity. We have a number of samples here that you can get when you get cloned this URL. Uh, if you'd like to get some more information on where JSF is being used in practice, you can take a look at this uh, real-world JSF links. And finally, the easiest thing to do is just grab the Java E7 SDK. Um, you can use everything I've talked about today and everything that will be in the other installments of this webinar series uh, can be found inside the Java E SDK. Thank you for your time.